I tell you all time and time again that domestic calls are like the most dangerous calls for an officer. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. As always, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're gonna to go over a shooting, the one that happened in Houston, Texas. You've probably seen the videos because it's freaking crazy. But before we get started in this video, if you are interested in any type of law enforcement content, that's all that I do on the channel. So if you could hit the like and hit the subscribe, help support the channel. If you hit that little bell right there, it actually notifies you anytime I go live with a video. I try to post two to three videos a week, but sometimes I'm just not able to make that happen. January 28th, 2022 at 2.42 p.m. Officers got dispatched to the 1500 block of Troll, I believe that's how you say it, Troll Street in Houston, Texas for a domestic disturbance. When officers arrived on scene, they saw the suspect. He actually fleed from them and hopped inside of a gray Dodge Charger, and then he took off down the road, leading the officers on a police chase. So when the suspect crashed out, this is how he crashed out, and this is what it looked like. He actually got out and unloaded on the officers. They said that he had a Glock pistol, but it had been modified and it had a switch button on it to make it fully automatic. And when you watch the footage, it's freaking intense. As always, the links to this video and to the news articles that I'm covering right now are down in the description so you can go do your own research and watch it for yourself. And there's other links down there as well if you want to help support the channel. Okay, so right here is the gray charger. It's crashed out. These officers are coming around the corner right now. <laughs> Holy shit. So those officers pull up and they see that he's crashed out. They pull up and he just unloads on the front of this officer's vehicle. And he actually damaged the dash camera, which is why it turned to blue and we couldn't see it anymore. This is going to be the body camera footage from the driving officer. This officer was actually hit and he was hit in the arm. So that's why you see him turn around and take off running. And he just continues to run far away from the shots. That way he can get around a building and try to get a tourniquet on. And he does a fantastic job about it as well. He calls out on the radio, lets him know he's hit, puts on the tourniquet. And he actually gets a bystander that works at this facility to actually help him put the tourniquet on. And he asks him to go get him a rag because the officer is bleeding pretty bad. So kudos to that guy for helping the officer out. I mean, this is a shit show of a situation. Shots fired! Shots fired! Send EMS. I, I got hit. Okay, so when I first watched that footage, I was like, man, he's running back and he's going to try to get to the other vehicle. And I was like, man, he's running a long ways. But he got on the radio. He said shots fired. I mean, his rifle's in the first patrol car, but he already nixed that and he had to get out of there and he was running and I was like, where's he going? But then you realize he tells him send EMS. I'm hit. And you see in a minute, he tries to put on a tourniquet and you can actually see that he's bleeding pretty heavily. I mean, that was pretty badass. He, uh, he got out, he took off running, he was shot. He probably had the arm almost immobilized from the shooting. You could see in the video he was bleeding a lot. And so he let on the radio, shots fired. He kept on running, trying to get to some cover because there's a difference between cover and concealment. The first patrol car would have been concealment because concealment just covers you up and keeps you from getting seen. Cover protects you from getting shot again. So he was seeking cover because he's already hit. It's more than likely his gun hand, and he knows he's probably out of this fight now, and all he needs to do is get out on the radio, let people know shots are fired, I need EMS, where we are, and try to get himself a tourniquet put on so he doesn't lose his life. Now kudos to that worker, he was hiding behind the truck, and he was like, hey, come here, and the dude just got up, ran over there, and he was like, do you need a rag? He said, tighten this down, pull it tight. Fantastic. This is why you need to train and know how to work your tourniquet. Keep a tourniquet on you just in case you get put in one of these situations because they will save your life. So this is the body camera footage from the passenger of the first patrol vehicle that we just watched. They got unloaded on and the driver took off because he got hit in the arm and he needed to apply a tourniquet. Suspect is now northbound. He cracked up. Jump, jump, jump. 
I would like to take a second right there because as he was running, he probably hit his magazine release with his thumb, but he didn't stop. He didn't go back to pick up that another one. He just grabbed another one out of his belt and he slammed it in there. He realized that it wasn't firing, probably because the slide was already down and it didn't rack one into the chamber. So what he did was he tapped and then he racked and then he reassessed. That's a fantastic fundamental that you need to know whenever you get put in these situations in case you go into tunnel vision or in case something happens where you need your muscle memory to react with your fundamentals that way you can stay in the fight and save your life save your partner's life so he tapped he racked and he started putting them down range again So right there, he realized he didn't have any more. His magazines were empty. The person's running down the road, so he picked up his other magazine, and he racked another one in the chamber and just began running down. This is why it infuriates me when people try to discuss and talk about defunding the police, because this is what they do. Yes, there's bad apples, and they need to be pruned off the tree, but you have men and women like this that run towards the fight and just try to save people's lives. So this person already unloaded. He already did a domestic disturbance at a house, and then he just unloads on police, and he's running down the road. You don't know if he's going to shoot anybody else. You don't know if he's going to take a hostage. They've already been shot at. Multiple officers have already been hit, and they're still actively chasing this person because that's their job, and that's what they want to do is to save and protect people's lives. And so it's so annoying whenever they just talk crap about police officers when you have officers that do this. Car, car, get on the other side of the car! <clears throat> You can see this white Mercedes right here. It was actually being driven into this area and the suspect took it at gunpoint and stole the vehicle. This officer, I believe he knows this is his last magazine and he is low on rounds. And so right now he's waiting until the start car starts to back up and he's gonna he's slowly shooting one round at a time because he's trying to make those shots count to neutralize the threat because he doesn't have that much ammo left. Okay, so there was a little more body camera footage from another officer that was in the vehicle behind, but it really didn't show us anything that we didn't already see. So if you wanna watch that one, the link's in the description under sources. So this is the body camera footage from the SWAT. So he actually drove the Mercedes to Lockwood. It doesn't give us a block address or anything like that, but he did barricade himself into a house. SWAT had to come out, and this is the body camera footage from this. So they break the window open, and they're immediately met with gunfire. At the other window, as you can see, it was on like a little porch and it had a fence right there. This is a separate window that he's at. So they're probably breaking windows, trying to see if they can flashbang in, assess the situation, get a layout of the house, uh, maybe start a conversation with them. Maybe he starts a conversation, they get a negotiator in and they can kind of go from there. <clears throat> right here, it's just gunfire back and forth. He's shooting, they're shooting. And so right there, you can actually hear him call for a nine bang. That's pretty much a flash bang is what it is. So right now they're trying to get the officers away from the house because they're just in a gun battle right there at the window and they can't just keep shooting back and forth. They have to back up, assess the situation and figure out what the next thing that they're gonna do is. So hours into the standoff, he finally surrenders and he walks outside, puts his hands up and they give him commands for him to come down the porch and they take him into custody. Three officers were shot. One was shot in the foot, one was shot in the leg and one was shot in the arm. But two of those officers have actually been released from the hospital and the other one is actually in stable condition, but he's still at the hospital being monitored. 
I tell you all time and time again that domestic calls are like the most dangerous calls for an officer. This was a domestic call, so uh, you could get there. It could go smooth. It could go badly. You could get in a shootout there. You get in a fight there. You get in a police chase, and then you can get in a shootout. So it sucks that three officers were shot, but they were badasses and just kept doing it. Stayed in the fight, either putting out commands over the radio, letting them know they were, or staying in the fight and shooting. Partners came in. They did their thing. They took this guy into custody so it was a long day battle for them it's probably very stressful but i'm glad they got him into custody that way he can't hurt anybody else so that's going to be it for this one guys if you enjoyed the video make sure you hit the like and if you're not subscribed make sure you do that as well if you want to check out the links in the description there are affiliate links to help support the channel because youtube demonetizes all my videos so if you want to check out any of my other police content you can click on that playlist right there if you want to see a sergeant grab one of his officers by the throat you could click on that video right there as always guys thanks for stopping by i hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.